very top of 170. Neshe Mishalkim Bibruim. He had given an example that if you have the sun shining through various pieces of glass which are dyed different colors. So each light, ray of light that comes through the glass will be a different shade. Depends because each glass is colored a different color. Similarly, HaKadosh Baruch created the world with many different entities that were able to draw and see God's wisdom on many levels. Certain things are more profound, certain things are less profound. I mean, even what's, what's minimally profound goes, is beyond man's capacity to fathom the genius that lies within it. Correct? I mean, the human being is the most profound part of creation. The human being. But even if you take a, a seed or something, a blade of grass or whatever it may be, in terms of understanding, if, you, if that's your area of, of understanding, it's, it's beyond your, your understanding, the whole process, how, how it works and how it functions. He says, because a trace of God's wisdom is in creation are varied. Therefore, we have an obligation to reflect and to contemplate them until their issues and aspects are settled in our souls and are established in our thoughts. Now, it's interesting. He says two views, two, two terminals. Settled in our souls and established in our thoughts. What does that mean? The two things. To be impressed. What does it take to be impressed? To be impressed, you really have to appreciate whatever you're impressed with. Some people are impressed instantaneously. Did you hear what he's worth? It doesn't take long to be impressed. But when we speak of quality of person, what a person has done outside of the material, where well, you're not the beneficiary, then you have to reflect and think about it to be impressed. It's like very often, you know, I, I, I share a concept with you. But unless you reflect and, and, and contemplate it, it doesn't affect your life. Anybody who believes in God, you believe God created the world. God wills creation. But people live their life as if God doesn't exist. You don't even think about it. Why? Although we don't deny the reality of of there's going to be a reckoning, everything, nothing goes unseen by God, but yet it's a little bit of a, a contradiction. If that's reality, we should be careful with everything we do, because ultimately there's, there's a reckoning. So what does it mean? Because we don't allow it to, to what? To be fully internalized. It's, it's intellectual, but it's not internalized. It's like, you know, Rabbi Sorosh Lanta always says, the furthest distance in existence is from the mind to the heart. It's the furthest distance. No, there's nothing f f further. Even though location-wise, it's very close, but in distance, it's further than from the sun to the earth. Because to make that connection is the most difficult. Because it has to somehow, that's the Achi Yashiv Yonam bin Avshoseinu. It has to settle in your neshama, in your soul. V'yonuch b'reyonenu. It has to what? It has to be established in our thoughts. That, that's, that's kavona, that's it's not a kavona. It's not a kavona. It's just a reality. It has to do with reflecting. Ref okay. Nobody said no. Nobody said no. But why? What does it take? But that's a f reality. That's what it says. You have to reflect and contemplate it until it settles, until you internalize it. Look, we say, V'yodatiyam v'shevosa levecho. Right? Moshe Rabbeinu says, Cloud, you should know it and you have to take it to heart. Hashivosa Levecho. That nobody exists but God. We say it every day in Oleinu. Vilo Yusimonu al derech achas bebrum kulam. Lo inyona mistapik al achad mehem. He says, if God's wisdom would be identical and in terms of repre being, representing his wisdom would be similar in all creation. 
it would not be sufficient. The wise men, wise men and the fool would be on the same level regarding recognizing for all of this is where we left off. If a person behaves differently in different situations, what does that indicate? That he's the one making the decisions. If a person, like we said, an animal, in every situation behaves identically the same way, instinctively, what does that indicate? An animal only procreates when it's in heat. Cannot procreate any other time. What does that mean? That means there's something within the makeup of the animal which does not allow it to function other, other than it's the way it's meant to function. Correct? That means there's an outside for force controlling the behavior of the animal. The animal does not have the ability to function based on what it wants to do. But a human being is what? A human being behaves, I don't want to use the word erratically, but based on the situation, based on the evaluation, the person behaves differently. What does that indicate? It indicates free choice. Right? That a person has a choice to, to choose to live as he chooses to live. It's the same thing with God. If God created relatively infinite, infinite amounts of creation, components of creation, and each one has another degree of, of genius, of his wisdom, what does that say? He's not locked into one. He's varied. Not that he's, he's, he's one being, but he's a being that has multiple, is multifaceted. So you see him in a totally different light. No, it's an indication that he, he does as he chooses. He's not limited. God is not limited. And not only is he, he, he can only do that. He does many things. That's why you need reflection. That's why you, we're talking about a person who believes in God. And you reflect. But wh when you reflect, what do you see? It's like, you know, they always say, how do you differentiate between a, a, an ordinary person and somebody who's truly special? An ordinary person, or let's say a person's a little more than ordinary, when you meet him initially, you're very impressed. But the, m the longer you know him, you become less impressed. A, a person who's truly special, initially you're impressed, but the more you know him, the more impressed you become. That's the difference. Right? Because at first glance, you don't see everything. But the more you see the person, the better you get to know the person, and you realize you see he's multidimensional. I mean, in, in, the, in the most special way. The other person, it's only, not that he's trying to deceive you, but it, it, he appears to be different, and you're impressed. But after a while, you get to know the person, you realize it's true, maybe that, but it's not what to be impressed about. Same thing with God. You look at the world, but when you start looking at each aspect of existence, the more you become more and more amazed. And you can't stop being amazed. You know, it's interesting. I mean, Rav Baruch Ber was the primary Talmud of Rav Chaim Briska. Rav Chaim Briska was a level of genius we can't even relate to. Can't relate to his level of genius. I told you, I once told you a story. There was a person who was a Talmud of Rav Chaim Briska, and then he became the protege of Einstein in Princeton. He was in Princeton, a lady who was European. So they asked him who had a greater mind, Rav Chaim Briska or Albert Einstein? That's the question they asked this person. So he had said that in terms of quickness and mind and genius, Einstein couldn't hold up a candle to Rebchaim. But if Einstein would work on something long enough, he had a more profound mind. His genius was greater. That, 
that was his eval. You, you, you understand? He learned by Rukhaim. He he left the fold when he when he was 17 years old. So his evaluation w doesn't make a difference. Reb Chaim was such a genius, it, it's, it's not to be believed. I'll give you an example of what his genius was, just to be, to have just an inkling of what this is. If a person, let's say, authored a Sefer, he, had, he wrote on 50 topics on Shas, and you would share one of the topics with him, one topic. And he under understood immediately your trend of thought. And then he says, what else did you write in the Sefer? What other topics? And he would tell you exactly what you had written. Of course, he understood the pattern of thinking, how he processed that particular topic, and he could do it to anybody. Th this was his, his level of grasp. You understand what this is? This is beyond. Insight. That's more, more, much more, more than insight. That means every... Gemara, how he would interpret it, and, and the question he would ask, and what, the, and what the answer would be, he would be able to actually, he, he could write the same, the same work as if that person wrote the work. Of course, he, he understood how that person thought. So they once asked, so, so Reb Chaim, uh, Reb Baruch Ber, mm -hmm. he revered his Rebbe, it's, it's not to believe to what level he revered Reb Chaim, his Rebbe. So, but it was known, Reb Chaim wasn't able to carry a tune. Couldn't, 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 it was, it wasn't tone deaf, but he could not carry a tune. So they said to Rabbi Baruch Bear, he says, the Rebbe was so perfect, why can't he sing? No, he can't sing, can't carry a tune. When the, the person asked him that question, he just started to tremble, started to tremble. He, he didn't have an answer, didn't have the answer. You know, that was his only so-called limitation. But in terms of every other ability, in terms of his quality of person, his chesed, his his understanding, his profoundness, his devoutness, it, w it, was, it was unequaled in his time. No, no, I'm sure he didn't dump it out there. No. Yeah, maybe.